Welcome to the Startup Tech Podcast uh, with another interview with one of our startup founders here in Sacramento. Today I'm with Ryan Barr, who is the founder of Repurpose Energy, and he placed second in the Startup Tech warm up pitch back in June. So, welcome, Ryan. Let's have you start off introducing yourself, your, your background, where you're from, how you got into entrepreneurship, and, and what your company is. Sure, thanks, Jeff. It's great to be here with you. Um, as you mentioned, I'm a co founder of Repurpose Energy. Basically, we reuse electric vehicle batteries to store solar energy. And so in doing so, we, we kind of solve both the need for more affordable and more sustainable energy storage than new lithium ion batteries. Mm -hmm. And also, we help to manage the, the growing electric vehicle battery waste problem because okay. recycling is very expensive. So we've been at it for about two years now. Um, 10 years of research in this area have been going on at UC Davis. So we're okay. building on that foundation and we have our commercial scale demonstration up and running, and so at this point we're transitioning from that demonstration phase to the product launch phase. Okay, and so how did this start? You said 10 years of research on this. Um, you haven't been working on it for 10 years, have you? Right. <laughs> no, no, been pretty fun. Yeah, so uh, Professor Park, my co-founder, had this insight a long time ago, mm -hmm. amazingly before there were really solar panels on anybody's roofs or before mm -hmm. there were hardly any electric vehicles on the road. Mm -hmm. But he foresaw that we would need more affordable energy storage and we would have a lot of electric vehicles on the road someday. And these batteries have a lot of life left in them mm -hmm. after their useful life in the vehicle themselves. And so he pursued a grant from PG&E first mm -hmm. and has just enjoyed success after success after that. And now the time is right where there's really a pressing need for cheaper energy storage and plenty of electric vehicle batteries available. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're commercializing the research at this time. How did you get involved with it? So he's been doing it for a while, but what was, how did you get Entre into, into his research and working with him? Yeah, uh, I started my career as a management consultant for electric utilities in the Midwest, and mm -hmm. I got pretty disillusioned by their lack of sense of urgency mm -hmm. with respect to climate change, and also my lack of involvement in the challenges associated with operating a grid on 50% renewable energy, 75%, 100%. And so that's when I transitioned to grad school and studied energy systems at UC Davis, uh, specifically how energy storage can allow us to operate our electricity grids using lots of renewable energy. And I interned at the California ISO, which operates the grid for most of the state of California. And after that is when I met Professor Park and, and got involved with his team. And they were right at the stage where they wanted to launch a product based on all the research they had done. And so interests were aligned, the timing was right, and we've been working as a team ever since. So how long ago was that where you got involved with him? That was about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And so since then we participated in and won a couple new venture competitions, including uh, the Big Ideas Contest. Mm -hmm. We won the grand prize out of 336 teams which really got our name out there. Um, now what is that, what is, is that a local thing or is that bigger? I know you, I know you were involved in UC Davis Big Bang competition, mm -hmm. is that something different? Yeah, know? separate competition, okay. so Big Bang is run out of UC Davis mm -hmm. and we won a couple awards in that and then the Big Ideas is run out of UC Berkeley and that's okay. open to um, the public as well, so I think any team affiliated with the University of California can apply. And so we were able to win the grand prize in that competition. So those really put us on the map, and then we've won a couple grants and other awards since then. Seems like you've had a lot of, of success and exposure in the last, I don't know, six months or so. You won Big Bang, you won that, you got a Calci grant, you got an NSF grant. So we to talk a little about some of those grant opportunities that have come up in the last few months and, and what opportunities they've afforded you. Yeah, we're really fortunate that there is so much public interest and public funding available for this topic because renewable energy and electric transportation are such urgent needs now. And so the, the CalSeed grant that you mentioned from the California Energy Commission will allow us to demonstrate a, a non-destructive fire suppression system. Mm. So we can detect the battery fire before it happens mm. and then deploy the fire suppression without harming the rest of the equipment. So uh, it'll stop the fire and then we can just swap out the batteries that failed and continue to use the rest of the equipment yeah. as usual. Yeah. Uh, 
So we're excited about that. And the other grant was from the National Science Foundation, which allowed us to participate in their customer discovery process this summer. Mm -hmm. And so we traveled to New York and Boston to learn about really rapidly growing energy storage markets outside of California, mm -hmm. in addition to, to Texas and, and all throughout the West. And so that really allowed us to confirm our product market fit, uh, which is really important for us as we transition from demonstration so to product launch. What were some of the key lessons you learned? I mean, that we always harp on, on startup founders who do customer validation to, to make sure the product market fit, like you just said, make sure there is a market, that you are solving a, a, a problem that people have. How did that traveling around to different markets, what bubbled up to you that you may not have been aware of before? Yeah. Uh, we learned that in the Northeast, it's not such a cost-driven market quite yet mm -hmm. because it's a little less mature than, say, California. Mm -hmm. Whereas in California, there's really a more urgent need for lower-cost solutions, it's more competition. Mm -hmm. And so we also learned that solar developers, who we hope to sell to, um, and I can talk about why in a second, but we learned that they really require a little bit more of a track record than we have currently. Mm -hmm. And they also really need certification to be able to purchase our products at scale. And so that's why we would love to now partner with a couple local businesses who either have solar or are interested in solar to really help them save more money with their solar by basically storing it to use at night and also using energy storage to reduce their peak mm -hmm. power demands to develop that track record that solar right. developers need to buy with confidence and also pull us through that certification process. So let's talk about that a little bit. What's, explain what your solution is so that those companies that you're trying to put a call out to to use your product, what is your product like and, and, and what's the installation like, what does it look like, what's the form factor, how, how long do they last, that kind of thing. Sure. So in more detail, the problem that we're trying to solve is that we are only about a third or arguably a half of the way to our 100% clean energy goal as a state, but already we've installed so much solar power that electricity is now most valuable at night as opposed to in the afternoon like in the past. And so that's why companies selling solar and businesses installing solar really need to start adding energy storage to store that solar energy and use it at night. And so we, with our products, enable solar developers to save their customers more money by basically storing that solar for use at night. Is this primarily targeted for residential or commercial and business um, installations? We're more excited about the commercial and industrial mm -hmm. segment to begin with. Um, our cost advantage is better there and businesses can save a lot more money with energy storage than homeowners can. Mm -hmm. um, so that's our initial focus. And you asked about what the product looks like. It's, it's basically a shipping container full mm -hmm. of batteries um, or we can also create smaller enclosures like the size of a refrigerator or a cabinet mm -hmm. to store these used electric vehicle batteries in smaller spaces. So what would an ideal uh, use case be? So let's say you want you want somebody to partner with some of the local businesses here. Um, what would be an ideal candidate for that? Like a, an office park, a business park, an industrial park where there's a solar installation and they can bring in and put that uh, in a parking lot or, or out the back or something. Mm -hmm. What's, what's the sweet spot for you on that? Yeah, I would say a couple characteristics of an ideal customer are one who demands a lot of electricity at night. Mm -hmm. They can save more from energy storage. Um, really anybody with existing solar, especially if it was installed many years ago, because then um, they're soon going to or already have lost access to these old electricity rates mm -hmm. that were very solar friendly. And so their savings um, are falling off a cliff essentially and they really need to install energy storage to maintain those savings. Also, a business who really values reliable electricity, you know, especially as we keep hearing in the news, these, as these public power shutoffs mm. become more common, um, any business who really needs to ensure that their lights stay on and their refrigerators stay cool, etc., um, they could really benefit from energy storage for backup as well. Well, that brings up a question. Is it, is it preferential to look in an urban area or maybe in a rural or more remote area where, there, where the grid might not be as secure and, and reliable or mm -hmm. what, what's your thought there? Yeah, um, I think we're a better fit for sort of more remote areas mm -hmm. or customers who have plenty of real estate because 
one of the trade-offs with our solution is that they do take up a little bit more space because the batteries are degraded and they're slightly older technology. And so customer needs to be able to have room for our systems. But with that said, anybody who meets any of the characteristics I mentioned previously could be a good fit. Okay. Well, let's talk about that tech a little bit. I know I've seen your pitch a couple times since you won a um, warm-up pitch, um, but you take some used batteries from cars, um, which I didn't know still have battery life in them. They just can't use them in, in cars. Um, so you take a bunch of those, put them in, in basically in series, I suppose, um, in a big container, and those can be used in uh, for buildings, basically, mm -hmm. right? So. How does that work? I mean, how much energy is left in these batteries and how long will they last and, and uh, how long can people expect to get out of uh, an installation? Yeah, so amazingly these batteries typically have about 75% of their really? ability wow. to store energy remaining. Uh, a couple reasons they come out of the car is that, especially with these old versions, people want more range, so they move on to another vehicle. Also. Like a few bad apples can basically spoil the bunch mm -hmm. with respect to the battery pack. And so mm -hmm. in our testing process, which is the first step, we sort of pick out the good cells, continue to use those, and leave the bad ones behind. And so first comes testing, and then we reassemble the batteries with our proprietary controls. And then that allows us to reuse the batteries for seven to ten years. And wow. so for a comparison, our warranty will be basically seven years with equal terms to the typical new battery warranty, which is 10 years. And so that's another trade-off, admittedly, is that the batteries take up a little more room and they don't last quite as long, mm. but they dramatically shorten the payback period mm. of the installation, which is really key to the decision-making process. And then when those batteries do run out seven to 10 years, you can just swap out new ones. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so any, you know, so you're, you've, well, what's, where are you at right now? You've got a, a pilot, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. uh, at UC Davis? Right. Okay. Um, so that was paid for by a California Energy Commission grant. And okay. so we reassembled about 15 Nissan Leaf battery packs there at a winery in Davis. Mm -hmm. And we use those to store excess solar energy during the day. And then we discharge that energy at night when electricity is dirtier and more mm -hmm. expensive. Mm -hmm. And so that's our, our demonstration. And now we're looking to do the same, but in a private setting. Okay, so you're actually looking for first customers beyond that, that pilot installation? Exactly, okay. yeah. Um, so before we forget, so um, people listening to this, watching this, how can they contact you if they're interested in that? Yeah, uh, you can reach out directly to me at ryan at repurpose.energy okay. is my email, or, or visit our website at repurpose.energy. Okay, awesome. So be sure to reach out to anybody listening to that who, did, who that sounds intriguing too. Um, so, what stage are you at as far as you know your your, your technology? Are you are you making any changes or, or refinements in that, or is it essentially just that we've got our product and we just want to get it out there and, and installed in various businesses and, and have that use it and give us feedback? Yeah. So, we're demonstrating our next generation battery management system, the the controls that I mentioned that are really key to operating the batteries safely and efficiently. So we're demonstrating that at another installation in West Village uh, on the Davis campus. Okay. It's a sustainable housing community in Davis. So, so that's coming up for us. Also, we're looking to partner with an existing software provider because there are lots of firms out there who have years of experience providing that software for new battery systems. And what that software does is optimize the charging and discharging of the batteries to maximize mm -hmm. savings for the customer. And so that will be part of our, our next demonstrations as well. Okay. So in addition to um, some pilot customers, um, what other needs do you have um, to kind of grow to the next level? Yeah, so we're raising a seed round of equity okay. investment at this time. And so we've identified a lead investor uh, okay. and we're looking for additional investors locally to help fill out that round and so I encourage potential investors to reach out to me about that as well because that's that's coming up in mm -hmm. the next couple months here cool. um, and potential customers and a software provider and that should be key pieces to the puzzle in place. Is it primarily just you and your co-founder at this point or do you have anybody else on your team? So we have three co-founders, okay. um, Professor Park I mentioned mm -hmm. and then also our CTO, our Chief Technology Officer okay. is 
a five-year grad student in Professor Park's lab, mm -hmm. and then the newest member of our team, uh, Ben Lyon, previously sold his smart lighting company to Siemens, and so he's helping us with business development as well. Speaking of Siemens, and uh, are there any other partnerships with with businesses like Siemens or Smud or PG&E or anything like that you've got in the pipeline? Um, nothing to report on okay. that front okay. yet, but. Uh, we would like to partner with the likes of, say, Schneider Electric. We just applied to mm -hmm. a program that they're running with Powerhouse, an accelerator in Oakland. And a partner like that could be key for us because they have a lot of expertise with power conversion equipment, and monitoring and controls. So they could be that software provider that I mentioned mm -hmm. in addition to bringing a lot of other benefits to the table. So we think there could be a, a really mutually beneficial partnership with a firm yeah, like that. Point. Um, so, jumping back into your background a little bit, you said you mentioned you were a consultant and you got your MBA at, at UC Davis. Um, is this your first entrepreneurial venture or have you been involved in other startups in the past or how, what's your background in entrepreneurship? Yeah, uh, I've been sort of training for this for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I participated in some new venture competitions as an undergrad at University of Illinois in engineering school. Mm -hmm. and. Took, I've taken lots of classes in, in entrepreneurship and have really had this dream to commercialize university research ever since I made the decision to go back to grad school. So uh, this is my first real go at, at a startup, um, but we have lots of really expert advisors around us helping us through the process. So there's a lot of great technology coming out of universities in, in East Davis and Sac State are great examples here. Any advice for working with universities to uh, commercialize some of the research and, and, and ideas that come out of universities. What do you learn along yeah. the way in that regard? Yeah, I would say the voice of the customer is is all important, and so uh, researchers at universities can really fall in love with the technology right. and and be really certain that they know where it's best applied. But um, that often falls apart when you start to talk with the people who actually need the technology and, and write the checks mm -hmm. and so on. So. I would just encourage students and researchers to, to get out of the building as soon as possible and start interviewing potential customers and get their feedback early. Interesting. And so it's, it's interesting you participated with us in, in our warm-up pitch competition. And we've had several other UC Davis grads participate with both in your cohort and our latest one. There seems to be a, uh, a young cohort of, of entrepreneurs and, and startups coming out of, of UC Davis. And I'm wondering if, if there's kind of a camaraderie there, if you guys are, are networking and working together and bouncing ideas off each other, or is that not kind of chill yet? I would say the community within co-founders in Sacramento and Davis could be tighter. Yeah. It's really hard to, everyone's so limited on time, but the, the clean tech community is really strong, mm -hmm. I think, in, in this area and in the Bay Area as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, people are really willing to, to help each other and learn from each other because everyone has this shared goal of being part of the solution and really enabling this clean energy transition as, as quickly and effectively as possible. So that community is very strong. Here. Yeah, you mentioned that. that we, we have a, an organization here called Clean Start um, in the community and they're very big advocates of, of clean tech here in the community. Um, I imagine you're involved. I know you know Gary Simon and he was kind of one of the ones that kind of put you on our radar to get you into the competition in the first place. How has that helped you, uh, that community here, uh, in, in, your, in advancing the business? Yeah, Gary is one of those very generous expert advisors that I mentioned. He actually led us through that customer discovery mm -hmm. process that was paid for by the NSF oh, okay. that I mentioned. And so he was there with us every step of the way, incorporating that voice of the customer. Mm -hmm. And so. Yeah, I can't thank him enough for all of his support. Very cool. Um, and another shout out to you. Um, I just found out today that you guys are finalists in the Sacramento Region Innovation Awards um, in the sustainability category. So, That's right. how did you just find out about that today too, or have you known for a little bit? Um, we found out yesterday. Yesterday. So they, yeah, they didn't give us much notice, but we're really grateful for that opportunity. Awesome. awesome. That will put you out in front of uh, a good community because that's going to be in the visitor journal. They're going to be promoting that. There's a luncheon. Uh, they'll be shooting, I, well, in the past they've shot videos with everybody at, and, and they displayed that at the, uh, at the luncheon. So that should give you some good, some good visibility too. Um, any other thoughts on, on that? Um, no, I'd just like to thank Meg Slattery on that okay. front. She, she was my co-lead for the customer discovery process I've mentioned a couple times. Uh -huh. and, and she 
spearheaded that effort and really got our foot in the, in the door. So thanks to Meg for that. Okay, so it's good shout outs. Any, um, what are some of the biggest challenges that you've had to overcome in this endeavor? I would say investors' willingness to pour money into mm -hmm. the clean tech community. And many of them were, were burned in the past on long-term investments that, mm -hmm. that didn't come to fruition. But yeah, because this isn't as, as quick turnaround as a lot of investors like to see. Um, yeah, it's, the economics aren't quite the same as software companies that mm -hmm. can really scale quickly and scale in a very big way. Um, with that said, our solution is one that requires a lot less overhead than the biggest infrastructure projects. Mm -hmm. And so that's one benefit we, we bring to investors, but their scars have been definitely a hurdle that we faced. <laughs> So what are the biggest wins you've, you've seen? What's your biggest uh, sweet moment you've experienced as part of Rebirth with Energy? One really encouraging moment this summer was our meeting with our local assembly member, uh, Cecilia Aguiar-Curry, mm -hmm. because she and a number of other state legislators are really passionately concerned about this EV battery waste issue. And so already actually a bill has been passed that will ensure 100% of EV batteries are reused or recycled at the end of their life. And so that's really going to drive our business forward. Mm -hmm. And we're just really grateful that they are, uh, they share our concern basically with this issue and that they're really driving things from a legislative perspective. Okay. Any, as we start to wrap up, any words of advice or inspiration or encouragement you'd like to give to other aspiring entrepreneurs or local? Um, especially in the clean tech space here in the area or anywhere? Yeah, I would just say that there are so many solutions on the table um, and the shortage is really people, I think, mm -hmm. right now to pick up those solutions and drive them forward. So gone are the days where you know renewable energy was too expensive and we had no solutions to really tackle climate change. I think now the challenge is just bringing as much money into this sector as possible and getting as many passionate, uh, smart people working on these issues as possible. So there's lots of opportunity and I would just encourage people who maybe are in other industries and considering a career change uh, to take the leap because it's, it's really purposeful work and there's tons of opportunity. So where do you hope to be, let's say, when, if you're dreaming now about the future, where do you hope to be with Repurpose Energy one or two years from now down the road? One or two years from now, we'll have a, a certified product that solar developers can really buy with confidence and deploy at scale. Mm -hmm. But in the longer term, we envision a future where stationary storage needs are met entirely with electric vehicle batteries. Because when you look at the environmental benefits of new batteries for solar energy storage, they're really not there. Mm -hmm. uh, so many emissions result from manufacturing new mm -hmm. batteries, so many horrendous local air and water quality issues associated mm -hmm. with mining these materials. Mm -hmm. And so we really want, because the supply is there, you know, we'll have more EV batteries than we need to meet all of our solar energy storage needs. So we really want to meet that need entirely with used batteries instead of new batteries. Mm -hmm. And you, so you're focusing primarily, I assume, mostly here in California first and then uh, expanding across the U.S. as as you grow, is that accurate? Uh, that's accurate. Okay. Yeah, the the need is most acute here, but even in states that don't have a ton of solar energy, like California, energy storage is still really useful to utilities and local businesses alike. Um, energy storage is really like the Swiss Army knife of the grid. It can be used for many different things, and so it's really disrupting the whole industry. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of opportunity outside of California as well. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else you'd like to add, share any other um, uh, calls out to other businesses? We touched on that. Um, what else would you like to share? I'd uh, just like to say thank you for hosting me and helping us get the word out. Sure. Um, and thank you for your time. All right, congratulations, Brian, again, and best of luck. Thanks, Jeff. All right.